Well, that was freaking awful. Is it the All-Star break yet? Let's talk some more basketball. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back in to another episode for Just a Bet Outside. I'm your host, Steven, and we're back to talk some basketball on a Thursday, and I'm not happy. I'm just not happy. I've been pissed all night. Um, hopefully my family didn't realize it, but we just did not have a good day. Uh, we're going to break it all down. Anything that could go wrong did go wrong. Cold shooting, blowouts to make us lose by two points on a, on a bet. Um, it was brutal. But either way, I'm going to keep grinding every single day, but can we get to the all-star break already? I have watched some games where players just look like they are not interested in playing basketball anymore. Uh, they need a break, I think. But Either way, today, tread very carefully. It is the trade deadline day. That's right. You know, you could make a bet, and then all of a sudden that guy's on a different team or they make a big trade or just something happens. Just be careful um, really all the way up until the All-Star break, to be honest with you. But uh, we did just have a big trade in the NBA on Wednesday, a huge one. Simone Fettuccini got traded to the Pistons for Kevin Knox. Poor Simone going to the Pistons. Uh, but really, that's not a great, not a big trade. Uh, Super Bowl collab video. That's right. That is out now. So be sure to check that out. There is the thumbnail. We had a ton of fun talking the Super Bowl. Um, obviously, as you can see there, Austin calling our shot was there. Jordan with It's the Final Round and Evan with the guy Boston Sports. And we just had a blast. So it's uh, the link is below, but it's also on It's the Final Round, Jordan's channel. If you want to go check it out, go support it and uh, check out our best bets and big parlay we put together for Super Bowl 58. So uh, we just had some weird things happen in the NBA yesterday. Steph Curry scored nine points. Tyrese Maxey scored 12 points. And in fact, that Warriors 76ers game, which was one of the worst games you could watch all year. I mean, it was awful. It was absolutely horrendous. You might as go, might as well go watch some just awful show that your wife likes better than that one. Because it was not fun. Uh, the two leading scorers in the game, Ricky Council and Andrew Wiggins. You ask me who Ricky Council is, and I answer, I have no idea. But he was a leading scorer for the 76ers. It was ugly. Trey Young, we're going to talk about why we lost his bet, but he scored five points in the second half. Just five. That's right. Um, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown for the Boston Celtics in that game. They were the third and fourth leading scorers on their own team. It is absolutely bonkers out there. Um, I know a lot of people that had bad days. Obviously, there's some people out there that still had some pretty decent days. Um, but, man, I think the books won yesterday, that's for sure. But that just means we're due. We're going to bounce back. Um, all I ask is that you keep the hate respectful. It's okay. I'll take credit for the wins, and I'll take the blame for the losses and bad days. And I'm going to tell you, this ain't going to be the last bad day on the channel ever because that's sports betting. It's gambling for a reason. Um, but I'm determined to bounce back. I take these losses hard. It sucks to lose. Um, but you just got to take it on the chin and uh, own it. So just keep it respectful. You can make fun of me a little bit. That's fine. But, um Either way, um, I'm ready to get going. No long intro here. Just one dad joke. That's all I got. I didn't get the chance to see who uh, left some dad jokes. Uh, busy night recording our Super Bowl video and things like that. But here we go. One dad joke. Let's bring up the vibe here. I told my wife she should embrace her mistakes. So she gave me a hug. That's probably the case in a lot of one, a lot of uh, instances. But anyways, in this video, we're going to go over yesterday. The awful, awful recap from yesterday it is power forward day defenses they give up the most points the most rebounds and the most assists in the uh, versus the power forward position gonna give you my two best bets and then i got one lean we got to trade carefully so i'm gonna give you another bet in the morning once i see you know maybe there's some trades while i'm sleeping who knows uh, but we're gonna wait it out we got some injuries and things too and then we wrap it up with the bets recap so let's pick it up here let's get some winners and time to bounce back i'm ready to flush wednesday uh, hit that like button, leave a comment below, keep helping this channel grow as we reach or try to reach our first 21,000 subscribers. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and welcome to the community. This this community is absolutely awesome. We're positive. We got each other's back. We help each other in the comments, things like that. And if you want to join the Discord, almost 3,000 people in there. It is all free. The link is below if you want to go join that and talk some basketball every single day. So. That's all I got for you. Let's get into it. And it starts with the recap. All right, let's go. The picture says it all, guys. This makes me want to vomit. I took a chance. I took some risks. And this is what they do to me. Jonathan freaking Kaminga, 20-plus points. Um, he scored 18. 
and then uh, got taken out extremely early. I know it was a blowout, but he got taken out really early, like a couple minutes into the fourth quarter, never to play again. Obviously, if I knew it was going to be a blowout on a game that was, what, a four or five-point spread, I wouldn't have bet this. But he ended with 18. We fall short of the one unit, which is all I really wanted. 25-plus was just a half-unit play that I was, I was trying for. Um, but Kaminga missed a couple free throws, too, guys. So, I mean, it was there. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. It was there. Um, and I know that makes people mad that we lost the bet. But, I mean, he makes two free throws, and all of a sudden we win it, and everyone looks great. But it is what it is. It's basketball. Um, he played under 30 minutes for the first time since January 24th. The next one, Trey Young, 3 plus 3. Donovan Mitchell, 20 plus. Mitchell didn't let us down. He scored over 30. That was easy. That was just a throw-in bet. Trey Young had two, uh, hit his second three ball, I believe, in the midway second quarter, sometime in the second quarter. So you're thinking that's an easy cash, right? How about no? How about he scores five points in the second quarter, or second half, and he goes two for ten. The guy who on G's of threes was shooting over 50% from three-point range in the last eight games decided to go two for ten and just be invisible. I, I don't even understand it. He was awful. Um, I'm already not a Trey Young um, fan in general. But I didn't think three threes was going to be that hard, especially if you shoot 10 times. But it is what it is. He decided to go cold on the game, I bet him. Brandon Miller over 22 and a half points. Well, he played and scored 20 points. Uh, missed what went like two of seven or something like that. Two of six, I don't know, from three-point range. Just needed one more. But he played on a night where he had a teammate score almost 50. It is what it is. Miles Bridges went for like 45 or 47 or something like that. And we fell three points short. So... And then the parlay I just threw together today, um, not threw together, I loved them. I loved every bet, uh, but we just didn't hit it. It was a half-unit play. So, again, a couple of these are just half-unit plays, so it wasn't like a six-unit loss or anything, but it wasn't pretty. It sucked. And uh, you know what? I'm going to own it, and I'm transparent with every single bet, so take it for what it is. Um, but I'm ready to bounce back. Overall record now, 124 and 116, up 7.46. We were just at 14. The swings in an NBA season are just absolutely bonkers. So we're going to keep grinding. Hopefully we can uh, finish strong before the All-Star break here in about a week and a half. But uh, that's the bets recap from Wednesday, February 7th. And before we get into the best bets, let's talk some power forwards. All right, these are the defenses giving up the most points to the power forward position. And we got two matchups today. The Bulls playing the Memphis Grizzlies and Jaron Jackson Jr. averaging 25.8 points per game. I believe he is questionable, so uh, be sure to check that out, obviously, if you're going to try to make a bet on him. Uh, Warriors are facing the Indiana Pacers. Pascal Siakam down there averaging 24.1 points per game. Warriors giving up over 25.5 points to that position. But other than that, no real surprises. The usual power fours we got up there. Of course, our boy Kaminga, I don't even want to call him that anymore. But you know what? It was a blowout. He, I can't really blame it on him, except for those two missed free throws. Uh, but other than that, that's the points. Take a screenshot. Go get some winners. Let's check out the rebounds now. And we got two more matchups. We got the Denver Chicken Nuggets facing LeBron James, averaging eight rebounds per game. Uh, and then we got the Cavs on the second night of a back-to-back hosting, or I don't know if they're another at Brooklyn, actually, playing the Brooklyn Nets. Remember this guy, Ben Simmons, averaging 8.7 rebounds per game. Still on somewhat of a minutes restriction. Uh, but, man, he can do a lot. Not scoring, but rebounds and assists. He does quite a bit in a short amount of time, that's for sure. But he's averaging 8.7. So those are the two matchups. Uh, no real surprises here other than Jalen Johnson, again, up there at 8.8 .8 rebounds per game. Uh, don't mess with the Sohan up there at uh, 10 rebounds per game for the Spurs. Um, and then Evan Mobley, now that he's back, given uh, given the Cavs a much needed help, that's for sure, in the front court. So, anyways, those are the rebounds per game. Uh, last 15 days, let's check out the assists now. We got two matchups. The first two, the Jazz giving up the most assists to the powerful position by quite a bit, too. Um, and they are facing Kevin Durant and the Phoenix Suns. He is averaging 5.4 assists per game. And then you got the Warriors right there giving up the second most assists, playing Pascal Siakam, who is averaging 5.3 assists per game. So uh, that's the power forward points, rebounds, and assists. Hopefully this helps you today and through the weekend. Um, but that's all we got for you for the research help. And now I'm ready. Let's get back into it. Let's bounce back and talk some best bets. All right, this first game takes us back out to Madison Square Garden. We got the New York Knickerbockers hosting the Dallas Mavericks. Mavericks minus two and a half. Over under in this game is 232. I'm going to get right into the best bet because it's on a game. It's on the side. No player prop on this one. 
Give me the Mavericks. Minus 3 and minus 110 on DraftKings. I expect this line to be around 6, honestly, because I do not believe Jalen Brunson is going to play. The reports are that he's he avoided serious injury. He's going to be out like days instead of, uh, you know, months or something like that. But to me, that means he's not going to play the next game. So maybe I'm hearing it wrong. I'm not in the training room. I don't know. So if you want to wait for that, I don't blame you. But I am handicapping this as if Jalen Brunson is out. If he does play, guys, that ankle injury was not pretty. I mean, he cannot be full strength, that's for sure. Um, and he's the engine for this offense. I'd love me some Dante DiVincenzo, uh, Josh Hart, all these Villanova boys, really. Um, but I just don't think DiVincenzo, Josh Hart, and Hartenstein. Josh Hartenstein, huh? Put them together. Okay, just hit me. Um, but anyways, I don't think they're enough to run this offense consistently. They just There's just no way because on the other side, you got two guys you may have heard of, Luca and Kyrie. They are both probable. They are probably going to play. That's what probable means, actually. Um, anyways, I rode the Knicks when Randall was out. Because like I've told you, I don't think he's a huge piece. I, listen, he's a good part. We don't need to get in this conversation again. But I do think Jalen Brunson is a huge loss for this team because he's a point guard. He's um, a guy who brings the ball up. He sets up the offense. He knows how to score. He's been shooting like 30 times a game lately. Like He is the offense right now. And without him, I just don't, I just don't see it. And they don't have a true point guard really behind him, um, because you know they don't have Emmanuel quickly. They don't have R.J. Barrett anymore. It's just Ananobi. So their offense is going to be lacking. Um, and uh, in the last, in the two games without Brunson this year, this is pr- with R- Randall also. The Knicks scored 106 and 94. So I mean, it's just been kind of a struggle. Small sample size. That's not why I made this bet. But I think the Knicks are going to need a Herculean effort. Herculean effort. Something like that from Dante DiVincenzo. He's possibly, he's capable of it. He can hit a ton of threes. He can get hot. Uh, but if they want to compete, he's going to have to go wild because we got Luka. We got Kyrie Irving. We got Madison Square Garden. These guys are ready to roll. They need some wins. They need to put together some momentum heading to the All-Star break. Kyrie, in the first two games back from injury, he's looked really well if you watch him play. He scored 36 and 23 points in those two games. Uh, Knicks, where they have the advantages on the last. They're a better rebounding team. Hartenstein is one of the best rebounders in the NBA, as we know. They don't have Julius Randle, um, but Josh Hart can get after the glass as well. He is a he just plays hard. I like watching Josh Hart play. Um, but all that said, I just don't think they got the offensive firepower, to be honest with you. So um, I think Dallas, with their two stars, I think they show up in Madison Square Garden. Give me the Mavs minus three as my first best bet. I, I wouldn't be shocked if this line keeps moving. And when Brunson is ruled out officially, if he is, I think we end up seeing this line at like at least six or so. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, five and a half, six by tip off. So anyways, that's my first best bet. And before we get to that next bet, let's talk our limited time promotion with Bet365. It is now live in the states of Arizona and Indiana. That's right. Bet365, if you have not signed up and you are in one of the eligible states, you got two great promotions that you get to choose from. Use the link below to sign up, first of all. It doesn't take long, and then you get a pick. You get first bet safety net, $2,000 in bonus bets. You can make a bet all the way up to 2000 If you lose it, you get it refunded back in bonus bets. So it's a great deal, and it's a way for you to be aggressive with a bet. So, Or you can just take the $5. Bet at $5, you get $150 in bonus bets. Either one is a great deal. Great way to start out your account with Bet365. Um, and especially if you're in Arizona and Indiana, because those are the two newest states to join on. But you got to click that link below to sign up to get these promotions. Uh, this is all thanks to our partnership with Odd Shopper. And of course, you must be 21 years or older to gamble. If you have a gambling problem, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. Now, back to the bets. All right, this next one takes us out to the state that now has Bet365. The Phoenix Suns hosting the Utah Jazz. Phoenix Suns, minus 6.5. Total in this game is 243. Uh, against the spread, Jazz 30-21-1 ATS. They are the number three best against the spread team in the NBA. 12-15-1 uh, against the spread on the road, though. Suns, 20-29-2 ATS. They are the fourth worst against the spread team in the NBA, obviously due to injuries and things like that. And they are an awful 8-17-1 against the spread at home. Uh, over under Jazz 29, 22 and 1 to the over. Suns an even 25 and 25 and 1. So nothing there. Um, I was going to try to stay away from some player props. It's a trade deadline, things like that. And player props have just been tough right now. But I like this one too much. So we're going with it. If I had to pick a side in this game, I'm probably leaning Suns, money line, and a parlay piece. How about that? I can't trust the Suns. I just can't. And Jazz on the, I don't even know. These are two teams I just don't know what to think about. 
But this player prop, I do know what to think about. Give me John Collins, over 22.5 PRAs at minus 125. I saw that on DraftKings and BetMGM. And Lord help me, I am betting a Utah Jazz player. Just Lord help me. This means because he's a Utah Jazz player, he could get anywhere from 4 to 38 minutes. That freaking coach, you never know. But in all honesty, um, he's him and marketing are kind of safe when it comes to be, um, minutes and play and playing how they've been doing lately. So he's been sneaky good lately. I mean, he's playing center for this team now. His rebounding has really picked up the last eight games. He's averaging the 20th most potential re, or rebound chances per game the last eight games at 16.1 rebound chances per game. And he's converting 63.3% of those rebound chances, uh, averaging over 10 rebounds per game. Um, and he's picked up a scoring, too. He's, aver- he's scoring 14-plus points in seven of his last eight games. I just like how he's playing. Um, and is honestly, is 21.5 points plus rebounds. I like it just as much. I'm going to be honest with you. This is just one more. So he just needs one assist to break even, two, and you get a little benefit from the PRAs. He does sometimes get zero assists, but he's also had two to three assists in three of the last four games. So I'm going to take my chances. Either way, he's probably hitting. If he's hitting one, he's probably hitting both. Um, But uh, in the last eight games, he has gone over this PRAs line in seven of eight games, averaging 28. That's right. He's not barely going over. He is averaging 28 PRAs per game. And he's averaging about 28 minutes played in the last eight games. So 28 PRAs, 28 minutes. Let me do the math. That's right. One PRA per minute. Hash brown math. Um, So really, if you just go by his averages and what he's been doing lately, one PRA per minute just needs 23 minutes played. But I expect more than 23 minutes played, that's for sure. Uh, Now let's talk the matchup. Suns, they've done pretty well limiting rebounds to centers. uh, But they're average and giving up points to the center position. I think it's baked in the line. I'm going to be honest with you because his rebound line right now, it's at six and a half. And that's kind of low because he's had nine plus rebounds in seven of his last eight games. He's averaging, like I said, 16 rebound chances per game. And they're putting his line at six and a half. I think this matchup is heavily baked in the line already. So just take that into account. At least that's my opinion um, based on the numbers. But uh, I can see this guy going 16, eight and two kind of line, 16, eight and one, whatever it is. Um, but he has a potential to get 10 plus rebounds easy. So I just need to avoid a blowout. And I realize that's absolutely impossible to predict anymore. I just don't even know. I, if you know, if you have the secret sauce, the secret sauce, the secret recipe as to how to determine when there's a blowout, please tell me. Um, send me an email. My It's on my account. Uh, because I just, maybe I shouldn't even uh, try to predict that anymore. And I'm hoping the Jazz can keep it close. Bradley Beal, I think he might not play. Maybe questionable. Um, I just hope the Suns can keep up because if they can, he plays, you know, close to 30 minutes. I love his over 22 and a half PRA lines. I'd play it up to 23 and a half if it moves by the time you see this, um, because I think they started this line a little too low. So that's my bet. Number two, John Collins of the Utah Jazz over 22 and a half PRAs. Um, Now I'm going to just talk about a quick lean I have. Uh, Pacers minus six. It's just a terrible spot for the Warriors. It really is. I mean, it's their fourth road game in eight days. It's their fourth road game in eight days. That is not easy. Second night of a back-to-back. I realize they didn't play super hard last night because they just crushed the 76ers. Um, but I stayed away. I'm still waiting to see if Halliburton's going to play or, you know, maybe the Warriors sit players. Um, but it just seems like kind of a Pacers route spot, to be honest with you, at home. Um, Halliburton, I'm expecting to play. He's been questionable in a lot of games, but... Um, you just never know. So I wasn't that impressed by the Warriors, to be honest with you. I know they beat the 76ers easily, um, but for a big portion of that game, they, they didn't play that well. The 76ers are just awful right now, um, except for the game when I bet against them, of course, when Maxi went off for 182 points. But either way, I do like the Pacers by the six um, as one of my leans. And there's some other ones I'm looking at. I'm just going to kind of wait it out and check in the morning. Um, and see where the injuries and different things line up. But Pacers minus six is not a bad spot. And uh, like I said, if I have any leans, I'll put that in the pinned comments below tomorrow also with my added play. But just tread carefully. It is the trade deadline. So anything can happen right up until tip off. So that's what I got. Those are my best bets. It's time for a bounce back. And let's check out the recap. All right, short and simple. We got the Mavs minus three at minus 110 on DraftKings. Um, You know, that line might be moving up, especially if Brunson is out. And then John Collins of the Jazz, over 22.5 PRAs at minus 125. That's on DK and BetMGM. Uh, those are my bets for Thursday, February 8th, with an added play to come in the pinned comments below. Again, go check out that Super Bowl collab video. We had a ton of fun, gave out a lot of best bets. Hopefully, it can help you guys with your Super Bowl bets. 
um, and just watch us just talk through the game and different things like that. So uh, thank you guys for the support. I appreciate it. I know it's been a rough few days this week after a good couple weeks, you know, the ups and downs, but I appreciate all the, the loyal people that comment every day and like and just stay positive. So I appreciate that. But hope everyone has a great Thursday. We'll talk to you soon.